box on a box. And I'm saying what up, America, and welcome to the A Better Black America talk radio show. Now, today is Saturday, January 25th, 2020. So what we're going to do today, we're going to chop it up and discuss the black agenda. Exodus 2020. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, Exodus 2020. You know, we're living in a time right now where we're being deceived. And our revolution is pretty much being truth tellers. We don't have to pick up a gun and rise up against our oppressors because that will never work. So now at the ripe age of 49, I understand why Dr. King chose the nonviolent route. Because we know without a shadow of a doubt, we, we don't have a chance. America is the strongest nation in the world. And I repeat, the strongest nation in the world. And if you don't believe that, then you really you're really not an American. Now, as we trace our people back for over 400 years, as we chase our people back for over 400 years, you know, we have nowhere else to go. Now, this is home. You know, this is home and we can't go anywhere. So we as a people have to have an agenda that's for the people. And when I say for the people, I mean God's people. And when you talk to the youngsters and they want receipts. So I have some receipts for you today. In the book of Genesis uh, 15, 13, the new international version says, then the Lord said to him, know for certain that for 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in a country, not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there for 400 years. The New Living Translation says, then the Lord said to Abram, you can be sure that your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land where they will be oppressed as slaves for 400 years. That sounds pretty familiar. Now, there was a lot of things that was actually omitted in the Bible. And when I say omitted, meaning uh, was left out due to the um, purpose um, that they didn't want us to know the truth. And now that we have outlived um, the biblical prophecy, now we can actually talk about it. Now, when I say outlive the biblical prophecy, um, we really have to um, look at American history. Now, we know we was here as indigenous natives, as um, black Indian tribes, but some reason, you know, they erased our history and decided to start our clock on the year August 20th, the year 1619 in Jamestown, Virginia. So don't, like I said, don't take my word for anything, please fact check. Um, sometimes, you know, when, when you really want things to uh, come into fruition, you know, if I'm wrong about something, I can admit that if you have information that you want to share with me, you know, to change my mind, to, to look in a different direction, please do so. But if you could look in the Smithsonian, the African-American Museum, our clock started the year uh, 1619, August 20th in Jamestown, Virginia. So this year, August 20th, 2020, we're going to be celebrating Black American Independence Day because we are free and we have our independence. And let me get back to, to these receipts. I after mentioned that, you know, in the book of Genesis um, about the biblical prophecy. And then I also mentioned that the um, some things were actually omitted. So if they left things out so the people won't know the truth you know i get it and i understand but if it's in the old testament and the new testament then it's a friendly reminder of what not to forget so check this out now in the book of acts 7 and 6 god also told him that his descendants would live in a foreign land where they would be oppressed as slaves for 400 years but this one continues on, like just like in the book of Genesis, it continues on as well. But it says, God will punish the oppressor and they shall come out with great wealth. And the old 
will die young. Well, the old will die at a ripe age peacefully. So we have to pick up the mantle uh, where black America was checkmated in the year um, 1964, the first phase of the Civil Rights Acts, because Dr. King got played. And in his months leading to his assassination, he started to realize that, you know, he was duped, you know, that he was played because Lyndon B. Johnson was a president at the time. He decided to add the feminist movement, which is ran by white women, the um, LBGTQ movement, which is pretty much ran by white women and white gay men and change the black culture, the Negro or the black race to a ethnicity. And when I say ethnicity, we used to be black and we was proud. You remember that? Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. We used to be black and we was proud. But now they turn this into a ethnicity, an African-American, which is a minority that we would never have a voice by being a minority, okay? So we have to pull back, okay, and, and finish the two legs in this relay race. You know, some would like to call it a marathon and uh, big up to Nipsey, the marathon continues. So we have to pick up the mantle where the civil rights era ended if we really want to be respected as a true race here in America. Because we're not an ethnicity, we are a race of people and we're part of the black race. And I know black is a color to some of you, but black is just the, the darkest melanated human beings on this planet, okay? Because I've been around white women and I've been in think tanks and I've, I've heard white women say, well, I'm a white Christian and then I'll sit back and say, Where's, where are your parents from? Oh, my father's German and my mom is Irish. Oh, okay but you white, okay? But they call us African-American. And I got a funny story because had a subordinate coworker, you know, who I supervised and he was from Ghana. And he was here seven years and he did it the right way and he became a citizen. So when I went to have a conversation with him, I basically said, you know, congratulations, man. You're African-American, huh? This was a few years ago. And he laughed and he laughed and he said, he said, no, I'm Canadian American. And this is my, my, my friend, he's from Kenya and he's Kenyan American. And then I sit back and I thought, I said, why are we African Americans when you guys are from Africa? And they fell out laughing because Africa is a continent. Okay, Africa is a continent. So as blacks, we're documented being here uh, before George Washington. Because I'm going to go on the internet real quick and I'm going to just see where, uh, when was George Washington born? Because if blacks was here before George Washington, that says something. Okay, so here's some more receipts. Now, George Washington was born February 22nd of 1732. So we was here. So we have to really start thinking and, and, and using our minds and, and really calling on our ancestors and channel uh, from a spiritual perspective because we cannot allow things to continue to go on the way that they are. Now, by us living in 2020, which represents clear vision, not perfect vision, but clear vision, that's another receipt. Because prior to that, we was under a biblical curse and a biblical prophecy. Now that we have survived the prophecy, now it's time to get to work. And it hurts my heart when I see my brothers pushing negative propaganda and pushing a narrative, supporting things that they really don't know and they don't understand. And I truly know that they don't know and they don't understand. Because when I talk about the Exodus 2020 movement, the the uh, black American independence movement, you know, it's going to be called so many things because we got coalitions and we're pretty much going to link up like a Voltron and, you know, make the change that we couldn't prior to the biblical prophecy. 
Now, some of us are, you know, waking up, still got sleep in our eyes, but some of us are so woke because I started this mission, this journey over three years ago. And I was wondering why I was stagnant and wondering why uh, it wouldn't move forward. But now and I totally understand because it wasn't the time. So it was a vision, just like Dr. King's dream. But now it's reality because we have outlived the curse and it's time for us to do what we are called to do. And that's lead the mass exodus of black America away from the two party system. OK, I've talked to a lot of people, you know, ask them their um, political um, preference. And a lot of people just say I'm Democrats because that's how I was raised. And I'm just a Democrat because, you know, but really don't know the truth about the party. Because the Democratic Party is the party that separated from the United States of America to preserve slavery. Now, we, you know, this Internet, you know, is amazing. Now, to give a dumb jock, you know, the answers to anything that he could think of is an amazing thing. So pretty much we got two brains. So this Internet brain will give us the answers because slavery was all over the eastern seaboard you know there were slave ports in new york you know but the south that was pretty much just bread and butter you know how they built their wealth and their economy based on free labor you know and we're going to uh, start a 12-part series um, on the black movement um, in a series of studio edited um, the first one's going to drop next week and it's going to uh, be called Tyrone Talks. I'm sure you heard of TED Talks, but we have Tyrone Talks and the acronym for Tyrone is the Yahweh Revolution Overcoming Negative Energy. The Yahweh Movement Overcoming Negative Energy. OK, now let me say that correctly. The Yahweh revolution, Tyrone, the Yahweh revolution overcoming negative energy. And if you don't know what Yahweh is, you look it up because I want you to not just believe what I say. Go find out what Yahweh say. OK, we're going to talk about this mass exodus of this two party system because um, all the t oftentimes I, you know, from grassroots perspective, I talk to people and ask them who you voting for. You know, they'll come out and, and oh, certainly not for Trump, you know, like, OK, I get it. And then the conversation continues on. But then they can't pinpoint that who they would vote for, you know, because in 10 minutes I can eradicate or eliminate any Democratic candidate, you know, for the simple fact that they do not have a black agenda. Now that Cory Booker and Kamala Harris are not on the ticket, you know, black man, black people. This is not a war. You know, that's what they told our fathers and grandfathers and uncles who were shipped off to Vietnam to go kill colored people. Black man, this is not your war. and This is not your fight. Which is a true thing. <clears throat> this is not our war. But that Democratic Party, more more importantly, has a stronghold on black America because it's designed to keep its people or its former slaves in check because they fought for that um, that that clause in the 13th amendment which freed the slaves but unless you're criminalized that's one of the clauses that they put into play because they knew without a shadow of a doubt they will criminalize us and we will rebuild the south post civil war in which we did and now there's rich and wealthy Democrat philanthropists that make billions of dollars off of uh, prison labor. You know, so one of our call to actions is to pretty much remove the criminalization clause and, you know, get those penny, those jobs out of the prisons and put them in the communities of color. So therefore they can actually work, even if it's just a minimum wage job, because I'm sure that a black person will be more comfortable working in a um, closed confinement or business making 12 to 15 bucks an hour rather than, you know, working at Taco Bell. May I take your order or working as a waiter or waitress? Because somehow we got a lot of pride because when I get a black waitress, when I go to a restaurant, if it's not one of those bougie restaurants, you know, it seems like the, the person, the service mad that, you know, they got to serve. You know, but it's, it's pride. And I, and I totally understand and I get it. 
you know, but to stay on the point now, the Democratic stronghold. Talking to people, no one could come up with the name. OK, but I'm going to share that sometime else, because, like I said, I, I, I really politics is something that we as blacks really have to understand, because uh, the only way things are changed and funds are distributed to through is through politics. And it's no wonder why, you know, the top 10 worst cities in America has Democratic mayors, Democratic city council and poverty is very high, which adds to the criminal justice system. So we're going to have to talk about this black condition, this black situation, because we can and we will. But that stronghold that the Democratic Party have, a lot of times people, they like to say, well, I'll just vote for the lesser of the two evils. I'm here to tell you today on the Better Black America radio show that there is no such a thing as lesser of the two evils. Just imagine if you went to the doctor and the doctor said to you, do you want stage four cancer or full blown AIDS? Pick the lesser of the two evils. No, doc, I don't want anything. I don't want to be sick. <laughs> so if we choose the lesser of the two evils, then somehow we're psychologically not free in which they call enslaved. So enslaved is a mental thing. Enslaved is a mental thing that we have to heal from. And like I said, with the Tyrone talks, we're going to talk about post-traumatic slave syndrome in which a lot of these slave descendants you know, have that crab bucket mentality. Go tell a brother, you know, your plan or what you about to do. First thing they going to say, oh, man, you can't do that, man. Why? Who you think you is, dog? Who you with? You're like, come on, bro. And I love this one. When I talk to my brothers, especially my baby boomers, um, my OGs, you know, man, black folk ain't going to get their stuff together, man. They blacks ain't going to come together. Well, I have to rely on this, the biblical principles, you know, this biblical curse that until then it somehow it was just like a spiritual thing. And now that we're free, things could be totally different. Things could be totally different. So we need to abandon the two party system and have a black agenda from a unification perspective to do something about poverty, you know, to to to. Um, do something about the criminal justice system. Okay. And I said one of our call to actions uh, moving forward is to uh, amend the 13th Amendment and remove the criminalization. Because I think Kanye West was saying we need to get rid of the 13th Amendment, but he didn't elaborate on it or took the time to explain what he really meant. So basically just taking that clause out and stop making prisons profitable in big business because uh, that has a lot to do with why the music that's put out because a lot of the record labels invest in private prisons. So we're going to talk about it, you know, and we're not going anywhere now building a better black America. You know, I was all over the place trying to do things, you know, from entertainment perspective, sports in which, you know, there's things that I am going to do, but you know, this is my lane right here and this is my niche because all day, every day, this is all I think about is how to not only improve my personal life, but how can I be a part of the evolution of black America on the renaissance of black America or the reconstruction era of black America because we do not have a lane. Now, this mass exodus movement, like the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party is identity politics, meaning you got to be a woman. You got to be gay. You got to be an immigrant. As soon as the black man say something, you know, they shut us up with the quickness. OK, because I've been privy to go to think tanks and, you know, somehow rub shoulders with people that you know, that took or, or, or take a liking in me and wanted me to be a part of something. But, you know, this was my reality check. And I've shared the story before. Was invited to a democratic little um, function. And 
these white people were telling me that they know what it feels like to be black. This white woman said, you know, I know what it feels like to be black because, you know, I'm a woman. I said, no, nah, but you're white. Okay. Which is the most protect protected creature on this planet. You know, you're white, you know, and there's a term that you can utilize white privilege. So, and you have a white husband, you have white children, you have a white father. So miss me with that. Then the gay white guy turns around to say, Oh, Rashawn. I said, no, Bouchon. Okay. Rashawn. I'm like, whatever, bro. He goes, I understand what it's like to be black because I'm gay. I said, bro, you white, you live in the Hollywood Hills, you know, don't no one care, especially in the state of California. No one cares about who you sleep with, but you're white, you're privileged. No matter what I do, what I say, I'm just a nigga, bro. I can't change this skin. You know, just that's how the Jews came to this nation, was able to change their names and assimilate as whites and prosper. And we're going to talk about the Jews, you know, moving forward down the road. But I want to stay on point about the exodus 2020 of the abandoning, abandoning of the two party system. And it is a movement. Forty six percent of newly registered voters registered as non political party preference voters. OK. And Frederick Douglass said it best. It is better to build strong children than to repair broken men. So the youngsters are getting it. It's just the fact that Generation X has to step in and do their job because they skipped our generation. And when I mean they skipped our generation, they ruined the minds of our parents, of the baby boomers in the 60s with the killing of, of JFK, John F. Kennedy. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and then the last hope, right after he won the primary of California running for president, Bobby Kennedy was shot on national television. And that was the, 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 the straw that broke the camel's back because our parents, you know, basically have PTSD, you know, telling us, you know, don't worry about what's going on with the world just get your stuff together just goes to school and get you a good education just worry about yourself okay been there done that been there done that so what next you know because i walk by that mirror every day and i've and I, i've been looking for a platform but somehow the platform was never created so therefore it is you know next man up it's like an injury you know, I'm a former athlete, you know, once an athlete, always an athlete from a mentality perspective. So therefore, you know, dead in jail, dead in jail, dead in jail. OK, next man up. OK. I'll step up. I'll step up, you know, because like I said, this this, this stuff is it's, it's in my spirit and, you know, I have to do God's will. And I truly believe it's his will because the biblical prophecy it's right there in our face, you know, and I know some scholars that go back and say, oh, that was the Israelites and they was black people, you know. But when you look at the word, things recycle. So we must break the cycle, because if we don't break the cycle, if we don't create a independent legislative body and have a voice for blacks and the oppressed people in this nation, then therefore we will be casted for another 400 years. So we must break the cycle. We can and we will, because when Dr. King said, let freedom ring, freedom is independent and independent is freedom. OK, and he was talked behind the scenes of the Poor People's Party. And, you know, he, he was going to you know be a part of something. That's why they had to do what they did, because they feared black America, because they just assumed that black America would hurt them or enslave them or do something to them that they did to us. But. We're not like that. You know, I know we do drive bys and game banging, but just to purposely hurt a person to for gain and to feel better than that person and to stand on top of them, you know, as being superior. No, you know, that's why God allowed us to go through what we went through so we can know how it feel. So now it's our time to shine and it's about love and it's a generational thing because you can't skip a generation. I don't know if some of you remember the Pepsi generation that was promoting it. Generation Next, the Pepsi generation. They didn't promote Generation X because X from a mathematical term is the unknown. 
And that math, math and that mathematical term being the unknown, they feared it because they didn't know what X represented. And we're starting to figure it out today. And X represents true freedom and equality in America with black representations and a black agenda. So therefore, abandon, abandoning the two party system is a must because no matter who sits in the Oval Office, whether it's a Republican or it's a Democrat, we as black Americans must have a seat at the table pushing a black narrative and a black agenda because the women's movement, they do. The Indians, the Native Americans, they do. The immigrant community, they do. But if there's not a Democrat in office, then therefore blacks are mad and pissed off. And I can't stand when I go on Facebook and I see this negative propaganda being pushed by black men, my black brothers. And I'm going to call them out, you know, pushing this negative stuff because black man, this is not our fight. Personally, I could care less about what Donald Trump's tweets. I could care less about what he does or what he says. Okay, because when I look at the um, economy, when I look at Wall Street, when I look at things that's been going on, what they predicted did not happen. You know, the momentum that Obama started, he pushed it a little further. And this impeachment stuff, it's just a sham. And it's just to to give us another receipt because it's a civil war. And it's kind of crazy because if you really look at it, and I really want you to think about this right here, really look at it. We've been here since 1619 on record. The Jewish Holocaust. And, you know, let me go ahead and see what date the you know, I'm going online to see what the you know, when was the Holocaust? Okay, just want to look at some dates. All right, because I really want to know, you know, when all of the all of these things happen, because we need to know. We need to know and they know how to hide some stuff, so you got to figure it out. So we got to figure it out. So I really want to know from a year's perspective. Okay. And it it was terrible. Okay. It was terrible. Like 6 million people exterminated. And it was uh, between 1941 and 1945. That was during our civil rights era. The genocide of European Jews between 1941 and 1945 across German occupied year of Nazi Germany. Wow. So in 1945, that's when the Holocaust was going on. OK. And it was the Germans that was doing these things uh, led by Hitler. So when you look you know, at the receipts and you look at the data, it, it starts to make it plain because The head of the impeachment is Jerry Nadler and Adam Schiff and the president called him Shifty Shift. Okay, They're Jews. Okay, they're American, but they are Jews. President Donald Trump, born in New York, New York, uh, Jamaica, Queens, to be exact, but he's German. So this impeachment is pretty much Jewish history because they don't like the German president. Black man, this is not your war. See, we have to really figure these things out so we won't be hoodwinked, bamboozled, you know, because we've been hoodwinked and bamboozled. That's why we, you know, running amok right now. But, you know, we're smart and educated people, you know, and it was a reason they didn't want us to be educated because they thought an educated black man is powerful. But yeah, in that time, pre. Um, curse 
Okay. But now that the curse is over, they can't kill nobody. They can't do nothing. You know, we, we served our time. So it's our time to have skin in the game. So I find that ironic that the impeachment thing is going on with the president of the United States ran by two Jews. And this Holocaust went down in the 40s, the early 40s. And what was we doing in the 40s? Getting hosed down, couldn't go to, you know, our schools were segregated and all of that. And then these people from a whole nother nation gets to come here, you know, get reparations, create Hollywood and do us dirty, you know, because Jews, they, they treat blacks right, you know, but their issue is they're trying to make their Holocaust an American issue and concern in which is not these americas is 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 just ours as it is anyone's else our ancestry built this nation on free labor and we can't get a cut you know we can't have a seat that's why the coalition is being built so we can have the conversations with the slave descendants with the reparations movement and and, and try to have a agenda where true equality is here because dr king said it best you know they re, you know it's easy to integrate a lunch counter or a school but true equality you know no it's not because in south central you could go down vermont you can't find a trash can but go to santa monica it's a trash can on every block okay and like i said you know we're going to talk about these things and we're going to discuss the mental and emotional trauma that comes with living you know, in impoverished communities on what you see on a daily basis. So are we truly equal? You know, I believe in, you know, separate but equal because I would love South Central to be as beautiful as West Hollywood, just like they have rainbows pointed, painted on the ground and have the rainbow flag and black is not a part of the rainbow. I would love to have that in our communities and have black, red and green crosswalks you know and get back to being black as the race because if we're just a black group of people you know that connects us to every melanated person on this planet but this mass exodus of the two-party system we got to talk about it because our power is in our independence because like i said we don't have a seat at the table because identity politics has railroaded the democratic party and the democratic party never loved us you know our elected officials are pretty much sellouts, you know, because they're not fighting in Washington right now to get, you know, aid and, 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 and funding and infrastructure dollars into these impoverished communities, these impoverished Democratic communities. They rather sit back and impeach a president than to bring resources to our communities. So something's wrong with that picture. So we're really going to have to, you know, do the work, you know, and, and, and we won't stop because we can't stop, you know, and next man up, you know. But I understand the anxiety, you know, that we have because of the programming when we watch television. So sometimes you might just want to take a break because that's all it is, is programming. You know, they're programming you just like when you go on your timeline, you see something about Trump or what he did. And then you 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 post it. Somebody else posted in the timeline. Everybody's mad. So basically you are a worker of iniquity, transferring negative energy into the universe. And what I'm saying. You know, take a pause on that and stand back and let's start using that same energy in a positive light and promote you know, a better place, you know, for black America. And if black America is better then the world is better, you know, but we got a lot of ideas that can actually change the game because we have to have a seat at the table, no matter who's in office. That's why being independent is very vital to the survival of the black race, because if we don't speak on it, our history just going to go down the drain. We won't even be remembered. You know, but we're going to have to step our game up and do what we need to do as blacks in this nation to basically create the fairness and the equality from a social and economic perspective. 
you know, because that's very important. Mass Exodus, Exodus 2020, black America abandoning the two party system for true independence, which is non party preference, no political party preference. Do you, you down with MPP? No party preference. And like I said, 46 percent uh, in the last year of newly registered uh, voters registered as no party preference because they understand that there's no such thing of lesser of the two evils. That's a cop out. That's a sellout. Because if you knew the history, you know, post Civil War. Now, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. I'm gonna give you some more receipts. The Emancipation Proclamation was signed in 1865. In the South, the Klan was established in 1865. And how did they convince black folks to vote for a party that enslaved them by force and intimidation? Now, if you want to live, nigger, you're going to have to vote Democratic. And that's what they did. And I understand because voting Democratic was better than picking cotton and being a slave. You know, you might be a sharecropper sharing the crops, but, you know, if I vote for this person, if I just stays over here where I'm supposed to be, then 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 the white man won't will just leave us alone. So I understand. But if you plant an orange grove, for, you know, over time, let's two, three, four hundred years. You're going to just only have citrus because that orange could could mutate to a grapefruit, it can, a, a lemon, a lime, you know, a tangerine, a navel orange, you know. But it will never mutate to fiber. And my point from the metaphor that I just shared is basically if the root is dirty and corrupt and built on hatred, then that's what the tree is. So we're supporting a party that supported slavery, lost a war, put that criminalization clause in there, forced us back into slavery to build this nation on free labor and segregated us. You know, segregation now, segregation forever. That's Governor George Wallace, Democrat, Louisiana. I mean, come on, the 60s is not that far ago. It's not this. I mean, come on, all of our elected officials and all the baby boomers went through this. And prior to the civil rights movement, they just dealt with it because it was better than being slaves. So they didn't want no smoke, you know, but today time's up and we're going to use that hashtag as well. That hashtag as well. Time's up and it's time to move on with a black narrative and a black agenda because we survived the biblical prophecy. Now it's time to show up and show out. Now it's time to get our money up. Now it's time to have a narrative for Pete for black America that will rival any race. It's only three races on this planet. You know, you got your Caucasoids, your Caucasians. You got your Negroids, your Negro, your blacks. And you got your Mongolians and everybody's had that barbecue. You know, that's the Asians and everything else is a mutation of a black person because, you know, every anthropologist and every, you know, historian, you know, agreed that humanity was birthed on the continent of Africa. And we're talking about, you know, millions of years, you know, we're talking about millions of years because uh, L Lucy, you know, the oldest um, fossils or human remains or bones found is 4.3 million years old. So they was kicking it with the dinosaurs, you know, because our history was not taught correctly. Now, if I took an SAT or an exam and said, who discovered America and Christopher Columbus is an option? Absolutely. I'm going to put Christopher Columbus. But we know without a shadow of a doubt that that's not true because when he got here, there was people here that taught him how to cultivate, how to harvest. You know, that's what Thanksgiving with the pilgrims. I mean, they eating turkeys and, you know, smoking good weed, peace pipe, you know. But how do you erase somebody's history? You basically remove all of the data and put your data and force them to believe that. So we was forced to use the year 1619. 
And it's kind of odd and ironic that 2020 comes right after, which represents clar clarity, you know, and clear vision, you know, but I'm proud to be an American. You know, I'm a black man. I'm not African-American. I'd rather you call me a nigger before you call me an African-American because African-American is a thing, you know. I'm a black man and I stand black and proud, you know, and I thank God for, you know, having an opportunity to, you know, be a part of something that's historical because we are writing our history lessons. OK, and as you see, I could be long winded. So I'm going to go ahead and close out with this. And, you know, I'm going to just say this Two chains is one of my favorite rappers. So it might take two or three listens to really get his metaphors, wordplay. So feel free to pause and go back because we have to be on the same sheet of music. Because we want this Holy Ghost to drop. And according to the word, the Holy Ghost is going to come down if we are on the same sheet of music. So we're going to have to get on the same page and have an agenda. You know, something that's going to make our mama proud. You know, something that's going to make our ancestors proud. Because if Dr. King was here today, I, I guarantee he would say, you know, this is not my dream. This is not what I foresaw. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to say that. But in closing... We was checkmated in 1964, July 2nd, when Linda B. Johnson signed those civil rights acts. OK, and when I say checkmate and here's the receipts for the checkmate, because we just celebrated 55 years of, of women's movement or the evolution of a woman, which is the white woman. We just celebrated 50 years of pride, you know, and women and, you know, yeah, sex and the LBGTQ community was added to those civil rights acts, the first batch that he signed. But what do we celebrate as blacks? We should have just celebrated 55 years of advancement, but our condition is worse now than it was when the civil rights acts was signed due to the fact that we just turned our back on who we are because we wanted to be a part of them. You know, growing up in South Central, you know, segregation was real because I remember, you know, riding home from high school, you know, let's stop at the store, grab something, let's get something to drink. And somebody say, hey, Glove, don't don't go to that store. That's where them bloods be at. Let's go to the other one, man. Oh, OK. You know, but our parents, you know, no, we're going to come in here and no matter what you say. So segregation, y'all fought to sit on the front of the bus. We naturally sat in the back. Because that's where we're more comfortable amongst ourselves. And that's who we are as a people. So the chess game, we lost, got checkmated. But now we have our opportunity. Now that we've outlived the curse, we have an opportunity to close the chapter and to write the closing chapters on race in America for blacks because we're going to win. We're going to rise. You can't stop a good thing. You can delay it, but you can't deny it. But sometimes, you know, they used to say, you know, justice delayed is justice denied. OK, but it was delayed, but not denied because now we're here. So since we got checkmated and we lost the chess game, you know, let's go ahead and invite them to our game of spades. OK, all we need is two books to win. We got the big joke and a little joker. And ironically, it's our trump card. I mean, come on. We got big joke and little joker. So it's a win win. So if you choose black, you win. So choose your race. And to my sisters and my brothers, my black feminist supporters and my black gay brothers that support, you know, a LBGTQ agenda, you still a nigga, bro. So I'm asking you all to come home and support the race because we could care less about who you sleep with you know just don't force it on us because we love you no matter what our family members you know we 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 have no problems with that but the issue is the promotion of it and trying to sell it you know because our boys are our boys and our girls will be our girls okay because if you could convince blacks to not reproduce you know that's genocidal so you know that's a, a whole nother topic of discussion but you know let's invite america to our chess game to our game of spades like i said we have the trump card our trump cards and our trump cards are the big joker and the little joker and we're going to close out and write the final chapters on race and move into the black reconstruction era and we're going to celebrate and party our black independence this august 
Okay. And I wonder why our politicians are doing impeachments and they're not even caring and concerned about what's going on because it's pretty much the devil. He said the devil can only set us up for a blessing. So their minds are somewhere else. So therefore, we, we, we need fresh meat. We need new blood. And with that being said, this is your boy Bouchard Glover. And thanks for tuning in to the Better Black America radio show, Exodus 2020. Until next time, peace out.